Kat here to talk about binary subtraction and negative numbers. The reason that I link binary subtraction to negative numbers is that the computer can't actually subtract. It adds and it only adds. So basically what happens when you want to subtract something is you need to find a negative representation of that number and add that to get your result. So first of all to look at how you would find a negative representation we do what's called taking a twos complement. So let's say for example we have the number 6. So I'm going to give this to you in, in 5 bits. So we've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And that is a positive 6. And to take a 2's complement, I have to find the negative representation of a 6. So what I do is I basically reverse the bits. Um, so a 1 would be a 0 and a 0 would be a 1. However, what you need to do to do this correctly is you keep all the bits the same until the first 1. So it would stay a zero. So this is our taking a two's complement. We would keep we would keep it the same until the first one. Then we keep the first one and change everything after that. So the summary of how to take a two's complement is you keep the bits the same until the first one. Then you keep the first one and reverse the remaining bits. Now this looks nothing like a negative, zero, negative 6, um, but it is a negative 6. And if we had been given the negative representation, we could follow the same process of taking a 2's complement to determine that it was a 6, that it was the negative representation of. The key hint here to know that the bottom number is a negative number, where the top number is a positive number, is the leftmost bit is a 1, If the leftmost bit is a zero, it means it is a positive. So that's a quick indicator. If you are aware that whatever numbers you're being given are two's complement representations, if the leftmost bit is a zero, it's a positive number. If the leftmost bit is a one, it is a negative number. So let's practice taking a two's complement. So let's say I was given the following number. Zero, one, zero, one, zero. I would see first of all this is a positive then I can figure out what number it is so I'll look at the place values we've got 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16 so it is a positive 10 to see what the negative representation of that would be I take a two's complement, I keep everything the same until the first one, so keep a zero, keep the first one and change everything after that. Now let's say I was doing a calculation and I was suddenly faced with the number one zero one zero one one. The first thing that I would think when I saw that was that it was a negative number, so I'm looking at that leftmost bit and I think to myself well what is it the negative of? So I straight away know it's a negative. Now I work my way through and I take the two's complement to determine what it's the negative of. So I work my way across and I keep it the same until the first one. Now the first number is actually a one so I keep that and I convert the remainder. And my answer ends up with a zero as the leftmost bit. Let's figure out what number this is. So our positions are one, two, four, eight and sixteen. So we've got 16, 4 and 1. So this is a negative 21. This has explained a little bit about how to interpret the numbers. Okay, so you only interpret them this way if you know that you're dealing with two's complement. Let's have a look at how we would use this to do subtraction. So I'm going to start off by giving you the scenario. We would like to complete the calculation 7, minus 3. Now 
I'm aware that that should equal to 4. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert our numbers into decimal, sorry, into binary, and we're going to perform the calculation. So because the 7 is a positive, we're going to leave it as it is. But we want to subtract the 3, and that means that we need to take a 2's complement of that 3. So we're going to do this calculation using 5-bit um, binary. Now the 7 I can convert straight away because I know what a binary 7 looks like. So it is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Now a 3 in normal binary would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. But because we want to subtract it, we need to take the 2's complement of that. So we work our way from right to left. Keep it the same until the first 1. Keep the first 1 and change everything after that. So this is the number that will go into my calculation. So 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. And I add those two together. Here I have a 1 and a 1, which is 0, carry the 1. I have a 1 and a 1 and a 0, 0, carry the 1. Three ones is a one carry the one. Two ones is a zero carry the one. Two ones is a zero carry the one. Now here, and this is where I'll explain why we were truncating the carry. Okay, so we've got our five bits would end there. If I was to keep that one, I would be forced to interpret the number as a negative number. And we know already that we're actually looking for a positive 4. Um, so it can't be a negative number. We truncate that carry and we interpret this answer. Of those five bits, the leftmost bit is a 0, so we know it's positive and we don't need to do any converting to find our solution. We look at the place values of each of the numbers. So we've got 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. We've got a 4 there and our answer is 4. Let's take that same problem but actually reverse it so that our solution should give us a negative number just so we can go through the steps. So we did in the last exercise 7 minus 3. How about we reverse that to say 3 minus 7 and this should result in a negative 4. Okay so remembering that our 3 is a positive so we just we're going to use 5 bits again here. Uh, we just convert that into decimal sorry into binary. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Now again we know that the 7 is a negative, well it's not a negative but we want to subtract it so we need to first of all find the 7 and we need to convert it to a 2's complement. So a 7 is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. We're going to convert that one, keep it the same until the first 1. Keep the first 1 and reverse everything thereafter. This is the number that we plug into our addition, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 and we add the 2 together. 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1, 0 and 0 is 1. 0 and 1 is 1. 0 and 1 is 1. Now this is where my, my knowledge of negative numbers kick in and I go, okay, my problem had 5 bits. Now my solution has 5 bits. Look at the leftmost bit, that's a 1. It means that it's a negative result and I can put my negative there knowing that it's a negative answer but I need to convert that number to figure out what it is the negative of. So I convert it, keep the same until the first one. Keep the first one, change everything after it. So check that number and convert it into decimal. Our place values are 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. It's a 4. So this number is a negative 4. Let's go with a slightly more complex uh, problem and let's deal with negative 3 minus 7. This one, if I have a negative 3 and I take away another 7, I should end up with a negative 10. So in this scenario, we need to take a 2's complement of both of those numbers. So let's start off with their normal ones. So the 3, we'll put that over here. We'll use 5 bits again. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. We'll convert that. It is Keep it the same until the first one. Keep the first one and change everything after it. So this is the first number that will go into my addition. So I'll pop that over here. Now I need to convert my 7. So I start off with a positive 7, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Convert that and I end up with 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 
and that is the second number to go into my addition, so I'll put that over here. And now I add the two together. So a 1 and a 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1, 0 and 0 is just a 1. 1 and a 0 is a 1. 1 and a 1 is 0, carry the 1. And 1, 1, 1 is a 1, carry the 1. Now here again, we've got 5 bits, 5 bits, and we've got 6 bits. So we're going to truncate the carry and interpret our result. Our result has a 1 as the leftmost bit, so we know that it is a negative answer, but we need to take the 2's complement to determine what it's the negative of. So keep them the same until the first one. Keep the first one and change everything after it. So looking at our place values, we have 1, 2, 4 and 8 and no 16. So 8 plus 2 is 10. So we have a negative 10 there. One of the most important things I can say here is that when you are working with your numbers, make sure that you use more bits than required to represent the answer. So to represent a 7, I actually only need 3 bits of information. But in doing so, that means that my leftmost bit is a 1, and I would be forced to interpret that as a negative. So I need to make sure that there are some extra bits of information along with it to allow the 2's complement process to actually take place. So if I need 3 bits to represent a number, it's safe to go with 5 bits. Okay, so when you're doing these calculations, always use more bits than you require to represent the number. So I'm going to show you um, a particular error that can be produced if you don't use more bits than you require. And this is called integer overflow. I'm going to demonstrate this one with just basic addition and I'm going to add together the numbers 8 plus 11. Now this should result in 19. I'm going to use 5 bit representation. So an 8 is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. 11 is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now although this hasn't dealt with any subtraction or negative numbers, um, it is a 2's complement representation, so that means I need to be on the ball and paying attention to my result. Now I've, had, I've used enough bits to represent an 8, I've used enough bits to represent an 11, um, but let's add them up and see what happens. So a 0 and a 1 is 1, 0 and a 1 is 1, 0 and 0 is 0, 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1, and 1, 0 and 0 is a 1. Now knowing that this is 2's two, complement, I see this 1 and I think, oh, okay, it's a negative number, I'm going to need to convert this one. So let's convert it. Keep it the same until the first one. Keep the first one and change everything after that. So this is telling me that the answer is, let's have a look, one, two, four, eight. So it's telling me that the answer is a negative 13, but my answer is a 19. Now if I had used more bits, then my last one would have ended up as a zero as the leftmost bit, and I would have been fine. Because I restricted the number of bits I was using in my addition, I ended up with leftmost bit being a 1, and that forced me to interpret the result as a negative. So this is basically an overflow error, uh, and obviously produces the wrong results. So we need to be aware of this, and in our own calculations, we need to make sure we use extra bits to prevent this error from occurring. So an integer overflow occurs when there are not enough bits to accurately represent the number. So use your newfound skills in binary addition and subtraction and test it out. Make sure to always check your answers against a decimal solution to check that you are doing the right thing. If you've missed any bits, go back and have another look and follow each, each of my explanations step by step.